Hello everybody to a short and compact lecture on multivariate calculus. Similar to the linear algebra lecture, this lecture is supposed to be a review lecture, which means you know everything that is coming in the next set of slides. So in the 1D case, which means we assume that we have a function f that's mapping from the real numbers to the real numbers. We have this concept of the derivative of f, which is denoted by f prime of x. And the derivative of f is usually thought of as the slope of the function at the position x. So here we have definitely not a um, tangent to the curve f, but assume that dx is going to be smaller and smaller, and in the limit case we will have something like this at this position, and similar here you see um, the tangent to the curve f, which is defined by f prime at the position x0 sort of the inverse concept to a derivative is the integral and the integral of a function fx is some function capital F of x plus a constant and capital F has the following characteristic capital F prime of x is our original function fx and geometrically one can think of the integral as the calculation of the area under the curve defined by fx. There are some basic rules for derivatives which are, you know, which are noted here. So the first line is the sum rule or summation rule, the product rule, this one is the quotient rule and this one is the famous chain rule. And if we start from the product rule, we can uh, derive these rules for the integrals. The first one is the rule called integration by parts, which is, as I just said, derived from the product rule. And the rule, often denoted by change of variable, is derived by the chain rule and has this form. So now in the multivariate case, we start simple and we assume that f is a function that maps from n variables to a scalar. And what we'd like to know is what is the derivative of f? And as it turns out, if we de derive or define the derivative in a nice way, then the summation rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule will be still valid in this multivariate case. So we know from 1D how to compute the derivative with respect to one dimension. And so the partial derivative of f with respect to some xi is simply defined via the 1D uh, case. And if you stack those partial derivatives into a vector, then this vector of stacked partial derivatives is called a gradient of f, denoted by this nabla sign sometimes. And you may remember the gradient points along the direction in which the function f increases most rapidly. So why is this the case? Well, to understand this, we actually ask ourselves, so what's happening? How does the function f behave if I change the current value x by some small amount? So this small amount is denoted by a bold delta here. So what I would like to know is what's f of at the position x plus delta with respect to the original position x? And as it turns out, I can write it like that. And you should Remember that this is sort of a 
approximation, which is based on the Taylor theories expansion, and this is the first order Taylor approximation of our function f at position x. And we can rewrite this in a more compact form. We can say, well, the first order Taylor expansion or approximation of f at the position x plus delta is fx plus the scalar product between the gradient f at position x times the delta, the small amount that I'm moving away from x, plus some term that depends on uh, delta squared. And because delta is rather small, this term is supposedly also rather small. So to understand a little better what this means, that we move away from our point x by a small amount, we say that delta is actually um, a unit length vector, and it's scaled by a very small scalar delta. And then I can write the Taylor expansion like that. So f at position x plus some small amount in direction p is approximately, right? you see that I'm leaving out the second order terms here, the value of f at position x plus the scalar product here. So what we are interested in now is to find out in which direction p do I need to go such that this actually becomes as maximal as possible, right? And to see, to find out which direction is the best one, we need to look at this scalar product. And from the linear algebra lecture, we know the scalar product can be written as the length of the gradient times the length of p, which is actually 1 times the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between the gradient and our direction p that we yet have to dis determine. And because p is 1, we have this nice expression. And we see this depends only on the cosine of theta. And the cosine of theta is maximized if theta is 0, which means that p and the gradient have to point into the same direction. So now we know. If I would like to find out the direction into which I have to move, at least in a very, with a very tiny step, such that my function f um, makes the largest possible jump, then it has to be in the direction of the gradient. So given this fact, there is an immediate practical application for optimization problems, and these are problems that we will face in machine learning all the time. Assume I have a function f, a scalar function, that depends on uh, multivariate inputs. And I would like to maximize this function. Obviously, a very simple approach would be, well, I look at the gradient, and I look at the, and I'd like to find those points those inputs such that the gradient is equal to zero because this would be then a um, possible candidate for a maximum. But imagine you can't solve this um, for points that set the gradient to zero. Then what you can do is, well, you simply follow the gradient. And this is called the steepest gradient ascent algorithm. So you would start with some point x and you would move a little bit into the direction of the gradient at point x n, and then you get a new point x n plus 1. And at this new point, you would do the same thing again. You would compute the gradient at x n plus 1, and you would move a little bit into the direction of the gradient at this point, and so on and so forth. And this iterative algorithm, as I said, is called the steepest gradient ascent, and it's actually a very versatile workhorse for machine learning algorithms. So originally we said, what's the derivative of f of x? And the magically first thing that came up was the gradient. And as it turns out, the derivative of f of x is actually the gradient transpose. So in a true math lecture, uh, what you usually would start with is actually defining the derivative 
f prime of x and then you would say the gradient is well actually the transpose of the derivative but we did it the other way around here and more generally the derivative of a multivariate function f is often called Jacobian and if f is such that it maps a n-dimensional input to an m-dimensional output then the Jacobian of f with respect to position x is actually a m by n matrix and as you see this matrix is usually not a constant matrix but depends on the actual value x and now you see at least the summation rule is easily um, applied in this new general multivariate setting the product and quotient rule do not transfer immediately but what's very important is that the chain rule transfers also immediately with the given definitions so you should check here that what you have actually in this case is a 1 by n matrix times n by m matrix which gives you a 1 by m matrix and this is exactly the derivative or the gradient transposed of the function f of g of x.